So today we have an exciting new product to talk about. This is the Cooler Master Half X and um, really this comes down to a complaint that I've had for quite a while with uh, EVGA and their overly long motherboards. They've been releasing motherboards like their classified 4-way SLI, their new SR2 uh, Super Record 2 dual slot, or uh, sorry, dual socket um, LGA1366 motherboard. They've been releasing motherboards with too many PCI slots. They're actually longer than a standard case, which is seven PCI slots. Now, the half X fixes that complaint that I've had that they're releasing these motherboards that there are no cases for. Well, now we have a case for it. So let's have a look at the overall specs of this before we take it out of the box. It is a black case. It is made of steel and plastic. Uh, there's a bunch of boring stuff. Now, something that they have seem to have forgotten here is that it is micro ATX, ATX, EATX, and it is also something called XL ATX, which is kind of a, an ATX that is too long because if we come down here, PCI slots nine. So rather than having a standard seven PCI slots, this case can accept either motherboards with eight slots and then an overhanging dual slot card in the bottom slot or even a motherboard with nine PCI slots, so two, nine, uh, two too long, like the classified four-way. Okay, so cooling system, this is probably relevant. Included, we have a 230 millimeter red LED fan at the front, a 200, two 200 millimeter fans at the top, uh, oh, one is optional, okay, so only one. A 200 millimeter fan at the side and a 140 millimeter fan at the rear. There's apparently also a 120 millimeter fan, which is a VGA fan cover, and then a VGA holder has an optional 80 millimeter fan. So, one of the big features of the Half X is actually also that it is Fermi ready. So it is ready for NVIDIA's latest GTX 470 and 480 graphics cards. That means it has really good GPU cooling. That kind of goes without saying. Okay, we got an installation guide here. So this is going to tell you how to install your components in the uh, system. I'll actually just let you read that. You can freeze the frame if you want to figure out. Oh, this is neat. USB 3.0 converting to USB 2.0 Calba. I th I'm sure they mean cable, but that's a, that's a pretty useful thing to know how to do, how to install the VGA bracket. Okay, we can kind of refer to this a little bit later. And then... Uh, Let's get the case out. Let's have a look at it. The first thing I notice about it is that it is black. Black everywhere. Black on the inside, black on the back, black on the top, on the front. Very nice. That is what I like to see for almost any case these days. It's a nice black interior matched with a black exterior. Black goes with everything. It's the new black. We got a plane flying overhead, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear me. But let's get all these plastic bits off and have a look at this case. So. Cooler Master's half line of cases is all about half, high air flow. So we'll start at the front. The entire front of the case is covered in grills. So all of this is potentially, if you've got a lot of exhaust, going to be a passive intake. And then down here we have, I'm just going to use this as a cheat sheet, at the front we have our 230 millimeter red LED fan. Up at the front, we've got all of our front connectivity. So they've got everything here. We have USB 3.0 super speed, which you can convert to extra USB 2.0 ports. We've got eSATA, Firewire, USB 2.0, as well as front audio. So it has everything. And then this panel actually looks like you might even be able to remove it and mount something else there. Oh, maybe not. Okay, here we've got a little slider. Okay, so that has your ooh, fan LED button. That's pretty cool. Then a reset switch as well as a power switch. So those can all be um, safely hidden for whatever reason. Just kind of kind of cool to have little things that slide around on the case like that. Okay, the overall build of the thing, actually, I'm just going to kind of see what I think of it. As soon as you fill up a case like this, it's going to be really heavy, but it's also very, very solid. Like you could easily put all of my weight on it even when it's empty and even though it has plastic to the construction because you can see the way that they've constructed the plastic is very rugged it's very reinforced and it also has kind of a cool look to it it's along the visual stylings of previous half cases but it doesn't take everything out of their book either so let's take the side panel off side panel fit and finish is pretty good let me just kind of put it back on and see what I think of that because it's not perfect by any means, but 
Yeah, it gets in there pretty good. So you can see, even when we take it off and put it back on, there are no unnecessary gaps in the case. Everything fits in really nice. That's something, hey, you can't actually take it for granted. So you just pull it away, pull it out, there we go. Let's have a look at the inside here. That is a hardcore looking fan and duct right there. So besides the window, we've got this huge grill, which you can actually remove the fan from but still leave the grill on so it'll still look pretty cool and you can actually remove this duct from the fan as well if you don't want that but this fan is designed to send as much airflow over the graphics cards as is um, humanly or fanly possible you can see it can plug in either using a three pin connector or you can use the included four pin molex adapter so we can go ahead and uh, file this side panel away and have a look at some more aspects of this case the interior once again, it borrows a lot from previous half cases. So we've got Cooler Masters 3.5 inch, or rather, this one has an SSD adapter already included in it, but I'm assuming, yeah, you can take that out. So they're 3.5 inch drive bays. Uh, now these look really flimsy, but as soon as you install a hard drive in them, they're really, really sturdy. So I, I love their hard drive mounting system personally. And then they've also gone and included a 2.5 inch adapter. So if you have an SSD boot drive, just right out of the box, you can put a couple screws in it, slide that into their convenient tool list system, and clip it in. Awesome. So it takes up to one, two, three, four, five, three and a half inch bays here. And then what appears to be a hot swap module in the front, but why don't, we'll have a closer look at that later actually. I just want to have a look at the overall layout of the interior first. So down here, this is the, oh, they've got a little cool design by Cooler Master stamp on here. This is going to hold your power supply. All right, so your power supply, it goes into the bottom of this case and they don't have an option for a top mount, which I don't think really matters. You've got little rubber, um, here, where's my knife? Yeah, I actually have a knife today, check that out. All right, so why don't we sort of figure out how this works by removing this. Okay. Oh yeah, this is interesting. This is the duct for the NVIDIA Fermi graphics cards. This is part of what makes it Fermi ready because you're ducting dedicated airflow to the graphics cards using like kind of a segmented uh, zone cooling paradigm that we first saw with the Antec P180. Okay, but you can actually remove this if you don't want it. If you don't like it, you can just pull it out just like that. It's only two thumb screws, so it's no big deal. Okay, so then I'm gonna, now that I've removed that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my power supply bracket here because honestly, in a build that I'm doing, I probably won't use any of this stuff. So while something like this power supply cover is great if you're not using a modular power supply, because you can hide all the wires behind it. If you are using a modular power supply, you're probably just gonna pull it out anyway. But I mean, hey, they think of everything, right? So this box is probably all of our accessories that's strapped in just like that. You can see the way they've positioned the, uh, the cooling holes here. There aren't actually any fan mounts on them, but the reason for that is that they just wanted to have a nice open well-supported place to put your power supply. So even if you have one of those ridiculously long power supplies, I mean, they can be up to this long, you will have proper little rubber supports for it. You'll have your four screws at the back and you'll have the right ventilation spacing no matter where the fan on your power supply is. So that's pretty cool as well. And let's see what else I want to talk about in the interior here. Right, right, why don't we just kind of cut right to the chase here. Here it is. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine PCI slots. And here's an interesting thing. There's actually room for another slot right here. So even if you have a nine slot motherboard, you can even put a dual slot card in the last one and you're still not going to interfere with your power supply and there's going to be a spot to rest the card right in the case there. So that's pretty crazy. Okay, then we've also got the cutout for the CPU cooler. Nice big cutout, so pretty much no matter where your CPU is positioned, you're going to be able to access the back plate. We've got our 140 millimeter fan at the back. We've got water cooling grommets here in case you wanted to do an external water cooling system. Now up at the top, this is a little bit of a disappointment, but the first one I've had about this case, I don't actually see a convenient place to mount a radiator, but that may just be because I'm not... Uh, 
I don't have a radiator here to kind of line up against it because something that I do see is that there are a lot of sort of extraneous looking mounting points in here. So it's quite possible that they do have the holes there, but I'm not seeing them. So uh, I wish, yeah, I wish I had a radiator to try it, but I don't have one on me, unfortunately. Oh, there we go. I just undid the other panel. So let's have a quick look at that. On the inside, we've got a bit of a sort of textured thing going on here. Now, this is a smart thing that they've done. You see how this panel is not flat. There's actually quite a bit of bulge. And rather than just sort of having this be flat and working the texture into this side, what they've actually done is they've given you more room at the back of the motherboard tray to route all of your cables. So with this kind of depth, you can route, you can route all of your PCI Express cables behind the video cards. And then with this slightly less depth, you can do the few cables required for the 8-pin around the back of the motherboard and your 24-pin. So that's a really smart thing that they've worked right into the case. They've made it look like just a design element, but it's there for a very practical reason. So that brings us around to the back where we've got, oh, these are nice actually. We've got really, really soft rubber grommets to mount all of our power, or to mount, to route all of our power supply cables through. So these are the kind that even if you have a cable sticking through it and, and butting up against it, it's still gonna snap right back to its original place. We have a nice big hole at the bottom, because I mean, in theory, you're routing as many as eight PCI Express connectors through this, a 24 pin, an eight pin up to the back. You're mounting, like you're putting tons and tons of cables in here. So it's great that they have a nice big hole for that. Okay, we've got our five, five and a quarter inch, rather six, five and a quarter inch bays. These are all standard tooled affairs, but personally, I don't mind that. Some people will complain that they're not toolless, but I mean, oh, they are toolless. Four, ha, four of them are toolless, my bad. And then the other two actually have the hot swap module mounted in them. Now, I wish I could figure out how that works because it, hmm. You know, it may not actually be hot swap. It might just be like a, a backplane thing. Although it looks like hot swap. There's, there's gotta be a way to do this. So just bear with me here. I apologize for trying to figure this out on camera, but, uh, no, I don't really. I do this all the time. Okay, let me just take off the front bezel and see what we can see what we can discover at the back here, or at the front rather, behind the front. There, that's what I meant to say. Okay. Hmm. This is interesting. I wonder if you actually have to take off the top as well as the front. And uh, cameraman's complaining to me about how long this video is, so I guess we can. Wrap it up at some point. Well, you know what? I'll find out how those work and then I'll upload an annotation. Never mind, I got it. I got it. There we go. Yes. They are hot swap bays. So, I figured out how they work. Hold on, let me pop the front bezel back in. Okay, so you just take these two clips at either side, push them in, pull it out. All you do is screw your drive in. It'll accept two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives. You can see into the back plane there, so it accepts up to two drives. So that brings the three and a half inch drive capacity up to a potential of seven, as well as the two and a half inch drive capacity by default with this case up to three. Let's see what else I want to still cover. Um, what else do we got? We talked about XLA. So our camera cut off, no big deal. Let's have a look at the front panel connectors. Here's our two USB 3.0 connectors. And then, so these are, uh, there's, there's a guide in the, uh, in the user's manual for how to convert them to USB 2.0. So uh, yeah, I'm guessing there'll be some way to do that. We've got HD audio, we've got a hard drive LED, we've got our sort of standard power switch, power LED, reset switch, all of those. We've got our eSATA connection. Then we have our regular USB 2.0 front header and then we have our Firewire front header. So no matter how, what connectivity options your motherboard has, you are going to be able to hook it up in this case. I uh, just wanted to quickly show the toolless mechanism for the five and a quarter inch bays. You just press the button, it locks in the drive. You press it again, it unlocks the drive. Very straightforward. Okay, now one thing that I totally forgot about while I was doing the last segment was the included accessories. So what do we have in here? Oh, we got wheels. Hey, hey, they really did think of everything with this case. Cause I mean, one of the things I said was, oh, it's kind of heavy. There you go. They put wheels on it. Oh, here, here we go. So here's how to adapt the USB 3.0 cables to USB 2.0 headers. All you do is this, you plug this in here, hide it somewhere in all of the, oh no, that doesn't work. 
Okay, I have no idea. Interesting. You know what? I bet I can figure it out. I bet it's not too hard. I'm willing to, yeah. Yeah, I'm willing to wager that at the front of the case there's actually ports that you plug these into and then you just run a regular USB 2.0 header. Very nice. Okay, we have an 8-pin extension cable. Like I said, they thought of everything because a lot of motherboard or a lot of power supplies aren't going to have a long enough 8-pin to account for those extra two slots of height. So there you go. They include one. And this, I think, is something to do with the graphics card uh, duct. I believe it supports the graphics cards. Unless you're shipping the system around, it's probably not a big deal. But I think it kind of goes in like that or something. Okay, and then last but not least, we have a big baggie of screws. Mostly black screws. All the ones you're going to see are black. Nice little finishing touches like that. Black zip ties, as well as a little speaker you can attach to your motherboard for di diagnostic purposes. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Cooler Master Half X, and don't forget to subscribe.